Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today I'm excited to be diving into a solo play for Spires and Hildegard. And this is the second game in the series of Spires and really excited to show you how this game flows and operates and want to give you a heads up on the fact that there wasn't any need to really focus on a setup video in this one because the setup is so quick and easy. I'm going to show you the inside of the box where the card decks per the different chapters you go through, one through four, are are all housed, you simply take the card deck out, place it on the game mat or on your table if you don't have the separate play mat, and grab the components. In this case, for me, I put them in game trays above, but you can simply lay them around the table and it doesn't take up much space to get this thing going. Inside the box, you have a storage tray with room for the components like dice and cubes. You also have the chapter one slot, chapter two, three, and four, and you just move through them as you progress through the story, of course, hoping that you can survive through each of the chapters. This game is solo playable and can also be played with two players. We're playing in a solo capacity, of course, here on the channel. And the first thing you do is grab three cards off the top of the chapter one deck. And you're going to see that it stays at the bottom to reveal one of the three starting cards. This will give you a random start to your adventure every single time. A midnight morning. You hold your breath and aim. You've never seen a midnight squirrel, let alone right out your window. That pelt is worth a fortune. Hildegard, your intrusive sister, barges in and hands you a package. It's for the Baroness of Seacrest Cliffs. Your first delivery. Exciting, right? Since the day's finally here, I thought you want this. Our aunt's compass. It could be useful on the trail, she says. Now at the bottom here, it states we're going to gain three gold and two feats of marksmanship. We're going to place the compass in our inventory, pull card 85, then we're going to pull 88, 89, and 90. And then we have a choice to make. So the two starting cards we didn't keep end up in a discard pile, which is highlighted right here. And then we went ahead and grabbed 85, which is the Midnight Squirrel. And we'll talk about this in a second. It was referred to in the narrative we just read. Then we grabbed 88, 89, and 90, which are these three right here. One is a character card, which will have feats tracked on it. We actually gained two feats, so we'll be placing a couple cubes on here in a moment to represent that. I'll talk about how that works later on when we run into it and when I use it. We also have two items coming into our inventory. It states to place in your inventory right there on the card and you can actually see the whole column available for inventory here and on the right hand side you can also if it makes it easier for you stack them like this in order for them to not take up so much space so you know you have a mysterious package but you don't necessarily have to be looking at the full card all the time so as mentioned, we're gaining three gold, two feats of marksmanship, but underneath it says, place the compass in your inventory. This is the compass. You'll see an icon up top left and you'll also see it mentioned down below. This goes in the inventory. So here's where I've tracked my feats of marksmanship. I've got two black cubes and these run from one to six in terms of slots. There's a number of positive status effects that you can trigger using feats of marksmanship. I'll show you that in a second. Three gold right here. Once you hit 10, you can convert those cubes into a larger counter to be able to manage things a little easier. And we'll also take all three of these cards and jam them up underneath the Hildegard card as well. You could technically leave them like this too. It's okay, but it does mention right on the card Hildegard's inventory below. Um, one thing is to take a look at each piece of inventory to see if you gain anything for this case slingshot and pebbles it says with this slingshot you can roll the black wild shot dice at the end of a set so we're going to want to take that and put it nearby because we'll be using it Feats of Marksmanship is something you always want to accumulate because you can spend it like currency to trigger positive effects here like Hone, Wild, Bullseye, Reset, Redo, allowing you to manipulate what you're doing inside the game to give you a better chance at success. There's also the potential to use a block as well, and it notes below that Hone, Wild, and Bullseye can only be used once per set in either one or two player games, and so you want to keep track of those types of constraints. So looking back at our target here, which is the Midnight Squirrel, let's talk about the card here in the top left hand corner. You have what's known as a bullseye limit. So this is the number of bullseyes you need to achieve to defeat the target. You'll also see an accuracy level, which is four in this case, and sets accuracy let you know how many accuracy dice you're allowed to roll inside of a set. And a set is essentially like a round, how many rounds of attempts you have in order to accumulate enough bullseyes to take out the target. Now on the right hand side of the card there might be a bonus challenge as well as a reward underneath. In this case it's about rolling dice. So again we're going to be rolling at an accuracy for four accuracy dice which gives us the opportunity potentially within a set to try and land these four symbols. And if we do across the dice then we get a bonus reward which is shown at the very bottom of two additional gold. This is a way that we can potentially gain gold while also taking down an individual. So that's kind of handy. Gold can be used later on as you 
you will see. So something worth heading towards. Now, right in the middle here, you're gonna see some important information around exactly the type of bullseye parts that are available to count towards building a bullseye with your dice. So in other words, we need to roll these types of symbols on the dice in order to land bullseyes. So as you go through targets and encounters in different facets of the game, you might want to track how many card sets you've gone through and how many bullseyes you've accumulated. These are easy ways to do this on the play mat. We're going to go ahead and do our first set because we're allowed to do this twice. We're rolling four dice for the first set and we're going to see what we get off the dice. Now, we're going to be able to finesse the dice after the roll and that's an interesting part of the gameplay. Let's see what we get to start at least. Now, finessing the dice follows one constraint. You always have to lock in at least one die after your roll, and then you're able to re-roll the rest. So in this case, not a good result because none of these ones line up with any of the results I can actually keep in order to start building towards a bullseye, which is really unfortunate. Now, taking a look up here, we do have a one pip, which is good. So maybe I'll hold on to that, seeing as it can work towards a bonus maybe. And we'll re-roll these three, hoping to get a better result. Now, some of these go flying off camera but we'll see if we can rein them in all right we got ourselves one oh my gosh this is not going well for me one thing quickly to mention is the fact that these dice are called shot dice, not accuracy dice. But you still look at the accuracy rating to see how many shot dice you can use. Now, I've just committed, because I have to after that reroll, another die. But as you can see, that particular die is not going to help me on the bonus row here. And it's certainly not going to help me try to get a bullseye. But at any point in time during your set and when you're making these rolls, you can use feats of marksmanship in order to try to manipulate the dice to help you out. You just have to weigh whether it's the right time to use them. I'm going to choose not to use any for now. We're going to keep on re-rolling, hoping we can get something that can build towards a bullseye here. There we go. We got one. So finally, we got something. That's good. And then we can go ahead and re-roll this one. We're finessing the shot more and more, but wow, that was not very good. So based on what I have here right now, I have literally nothing because I only have half of a bullseye. And based on the two different types that I can use to build a bullseye, I can't create one right now. I need another white one like this to put them together just to get one bullseye towards the three I need to take out the Midnight Squirrel. So I've already burned an entire set and I only have one more set to go, but I also have this black die, which is called the Black Wild Shot Dice, which I get for having the Slingshot, which might be able to salvage this round for me and give me another hit. And there's one that comes, I believe, per chapter as you go through the game. So this die will change up over time. Let's go ahead and roll this up and see what we get. Oh, wow, that is my luck today. That is a full on miss. That was a wipe for this set. All right, so as you can see up here in the top left hand corner, I've gone ahead and marked that I've done one set so far. I haven't gotten any bullseyes, which is really embarrassing. And I still need three to succeed at this, which is yikes. It's, I don't even, it, it is possible. It is because I have four dice, which could create two bullseyes. And then this one could land the third one. So it is still possible. Plus I could push myself in order to use the feats of marksmanship if I really need to. All right, that's not a bad roll. So I'm gonna probably go ahead and commit to both of these because anything that gets me towards bullseyes is a good thing. So we're gonna go ahead and finesse this a little more, see if we can kind of work our way up. No, that is not good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, actually gonna, before I commit this, I'm gonna take a look at my feats of marksmanship. What can I do? So if I pay one, I can add a shot dice on the next set. Well, I don't have that opportunity anymore. I can re-roll a wild shot on set. Now this allows me to do this once. I could re-roll a die right now. So I could pay one to re-roll. Do I want to risk this? Like the chance, like, let's do it. Let's do it for fun. So we're gonna actually spend one right now. We're gonna re-roll one of the ones I just rolled. Yes, that worked out, that's awesome. So we now have one bullseye, okay. So now that I've committed that one, I'm gonna re-roll the last one going into the next thing. So this, is, this has got potential, we got potential, we still could spend it, but remember, I can only use that one feat that I just did, which is uh, called the wild, uh, once per set. So I can't do it again. So I really am gambling that I'm gonna hit the other side of that black bullseye at this point, and I don't, I don't do it. It was quite a gamble. Now in terms of the odds of that, I had one, I think it's just one. So one in six, it's not good. But either way, uh, unfortunate, I uh, took the risk and it didn't work out. Um, but now we're gonna go to this die right here. Now, is there anything else I could do? I've, I've used wild. The only other thing I could do is add to my next set, but there isn't gonna be one. So that's not gonna help me. And a roll here's a blank. So in the end, only one bullseye across the two sets. Pretty bad.
Well, starting off with my venture, the first thing I proved is that I'm not a good shot yet. At least at small targets anyway. So in this case, because I wasn't successful, I'm discarding this card. All right, so now we move back to the card that we were resolving originally, the Midnight Morning. At the very bottom here, we have a choice. Breakfast, or we can go to a merchant. I decided that I want to go and get some breakfast, so I've gone ahead and pulled card number two. So we'll go ahead and place this back in our inventory, because remember at the very bottom it's a compass, and we're slotting that back in. Here we have a location to explore, the Hungry Hog. It says, before embarking into the wild, you decide a hearty breakfast at the Hungry Hog is in order. You haven't eaten since yesterday, and your stomach is growling. Now, it says the barkeep asks you, well, asks you what you'll have. So I could choose dried fruits and nuts. I could go for porridge and coffee or bread and buttermilk. I'm going to go with the porridge and coffee. Coffee sounds great. Behind the curtain, it says you slurp up the last of your porridge, down the rest of your coffee, and pay up. Pay one gold for breakfast. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So I now just have two gold left. You barely get out the door when a stout man with odd spectacles blocks your path. You're late. Get in the wagon. So we can either play along with this as if we know what's going on, or we could say, huh, I'm not doing that. I decided not to go along with it, and it states the spectacle band won't take no for an answer. Wait, 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 you must take this, he demands. Then he reaches into his jacket pocket. You're alarmed by his forcefulness. We are now going into a battle here. We have a target, the card peddler. We have a set, which is just one, and we're only rolling three dice. I really don't see this going positively based on how poorly I handled the squirrel, but let's give this a shot here. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a roll, see what we get. If I get the bonus, that would be incredible, but let's see how we, what? No way, I actually got it? That is crazy. What an absolutely incredible roll that I was not anticipating. I was kind of just saying it like lightheartedly, like, ha, that'd be kind of funny if I got it. But when those moments happen, which they do, they feel so, so satisfying. So we got ourselves exactly the bonus. We also are able to, with these two dice, build a bullseye as the pip can go inside the circle, which is a bullseye. And that is going to count for the one it needs to take out the card peddler, or at least hit the card peddler, as it states here. And then, of course, I still get to roll the black die, but that's just going to basically give me a blank. There is the chance, though, that you can get an X. And an X is not fun. I didn't get it, thankfully, but if I had of, it's called a whoopsie, and you remove one shot die result of your choice, which would have completely messed over how awesome that last roll was. So I'll give myself the gold for hitting the card peddler, and as we can see right here, he's not happy about it. He says, outrageous, you could have broken my glasses. An unsavory sort like yourself doesn't deserve this, but I do what she tells me. Take it, please, I haven't all day. The little man waves the card in your face like he's giving a stray dog a scrap of meat. I have no idea what you're saying. What's this about, you question? I'm old, I'm tired, and I'm about to leave. You have to the count of three. I'm obviously making life difficult for this individual who wants to give me something for some reason but won't explain why he wants to give it to me. And I can continue to resist if I really want to, which I'm guessing I'm going to have to make another tight die roll potentially or check. But at the same time, I could also just straight up accept the card. It states below to pull card 86 before advancing to card 59. Roll any wild shot dice. If it's a bullseye, you pull a specific card. What to do here? Tough call. I decided to stop making this guy's life miserable and hitting him and basically refusing everything he throws at me. I've accepted the card, which would be 59, and before I do that, I'm supposed to pull 86, which I've done. It says, Mark of the Hawk. It says, you feel as if your senses are heightened. In some instances going forward, you may be able to use the Mark of the Hawk ability. Place it in your inventory. Awesome. So we're going to take this card and remove it from this area. It's going into our inventory, and I'll sort that out later on, which is sweet to have that ability. And then it says, at this point, we need to roll any wild shot dice we have. And if it's a bullseye, we pull card 65. So let's go ahead with the black die here and give it a roll, see what we get. We got a bullseye. Oh no, it looks like rolling a bullseye in this case did not result in something potentially good. We now have what looks like a really aggressive fight on our hands. This is going to be a set three, accuracy four. We're going up an individual with five. We need five bullseye to take it down. It says a robed figure stands in your way. You could have sworn he wasn't there moments earlier. Oh my. So the hit says return to the previous story card, which would be this one. So we'll just place it off to the side for now. And if we miss, of course, I'm guessing it's not going to be good. And then we, we actually take the card and put it back in the deck when it's complete. Nasty. So this stalker can continue to just pop up and cause us grief in the future. Let's try to remove it. We have the ability to get bonuses here of up to two gold when we're inside of a set. If we land those particular dice, I've got three sets, which I'll be marking across the top up here. 
let's go ahead and start rolling dice and see how we do. So accuracy four, we're going for a roll. Let's see what we got here. Oh, wow, that is pretty awesome because that's exactly one of the ones that I need. So I'm going to actually commit two of these and that's going to be a guarantee. Actually, you know what? I kind of want to do another one. I might actually commit this one too. It'd be silly not to. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, Stalker, let's see. Can I get this other half of the white? Yes, what the heck is going on right now? My rolling is all of a sudden turned awesome. That is two bullseyes right there, which is awesome. Oh, this is incredible. If I get a bullseye off the black die, it's gonna be ridiculous. I'll already be half, more than halfway through uh, his health, basically. And yes, I do. This is incredible. Three hits out of the gate in the very first set. So I've gone ahead and updated my trackers. I'm one set in. I actually had my bullseye left on the one from the previous attack that I was doing. So I've reset that and then gone one, two, three, and we're ready to go into our next set. So let's go ahead and roll some dice. We're doing pretty good. Famous last words before everything goes sideways. Here we go. That's how you jinx yourself is when you start saying you're doing great. Um, that works out for me. That's not bad. And actually you can see here, the white ones were not gonna help me towards a bonus. So I wasn't really worrying about that in the last set. We're gonna go ahead and reroll these. Continuing to work towards, ugh, that's no good. Um, yeah, that's not gonna help. I, I gotta just commit one of them anyway, so let's just commit this one. I do still have the ability to reroll if I need to, but yikes, that's not good. Things are starting to trend in the wrong direction. Oh dear. <laughs> Here's hoping off the, uh, the hit die that I get something a little better. There we go. So we got ourselves one. So now we're up to four, which is good. We have our last set happening right now. So we just need to get one bullseye inside of here. I'd really like to not use my feats of marksmanship in order to pull this off. There's a black, that's good. We can maybe work our way up to getting some gold or not. Uh, tough calls. So now I got one of each. That increases my odds of getting the side I need. No, oh no, come on. Give me one of those sides. Yes, all right. And then all I need to do now is not roll. Well, I guess if I roll the X at this case, I can throw one of these dies out of the equation. It doesn't hurt me. And sure enough, I spoke it into existence. So when this rolls, basically I just take one of them and remove it, it doesn't count. But this still generates a bullseye and that is gonna be five. So the good news is I didn't get the fail side of that equation where things might have gone bad for me, uh, but that card unfortunately goes back inside the deck. So it means it could come back out later on and mess with me again, which is not fun. Now we return back to the original card and we're gonna go ahead and pull 59 like we're supposed to and we're into rations. It says, it's setting in, you're about to leave the Grey Oaks. Maybe one final stop at the Merchant. To visit the Merchant, pull cards 93, 94, 95, unless of course they've already been purchased. Buying things at the merchant is pretty straightforward. If you have the gold to do it, you can buy it. So in this case, I could spend three of the gold that I do have in order to pick up the grappling rope, or I could uh, mix and match some things. I could go after the popper here or the bag. Now, looking across them, they all have their benefits labeled on them. And of course, they go in your inventory when you purchase them. I'm gonna lean towards the grappling rope. I think being able to climb up and down safely sounds like a good idea. Continuing on here, it states you're approached by a shriveled up woman who looks like a date left to dry in the sun. You there, are you a fisherman, she asks? On occasion, you say, caught off guard. Well then, I know a place you can catch something for the both of us. A little fishing might not be a bad idea, so we can choose to fish or we can decline. And honestly, I kind of want to fish. The partially mummified woman leads you across Edgewater Bridge. I've tried here, nothing bites, you groan. I need someone with a strong arm and a right touch. Cast all the way out to those cattails. I can't reach them myself. She hands you a fishing pole. The lure is an odd black stone. It's heavy. Okay, here goes. All right, we got ourselves a target here and a little bit different of a bonus on the right-hand side. So you can see for the number of bullseyes that we get, if we get up to six, which is beyond what we need to succeed at this, at five, we're gonna actually gain a feat of marksmanship. All right, first set is underway. We have four sides of the die that are good for us to build out bullseyes, so that's a plus. That's pretty good. We got a bullseye right off the hop, so that's gonna hold on to those two, and we're gonna reroll these. Let's see, ooh, that's getting better. Come on, let's get the other half of that. Yes, nice, we got two right out of the gates. We're doing good. This results in a blank, but that's still two bullseyes after one set. Pretty happy with that. All right, we're going into our second set here. There we go, there's a bullseye right there, and I believe both of those are valid to use. Ooh, tough call, which one of these to keep? Um, I guess it's a gamble either way. Oh, that rolled way down, right off camera, but no. So that's a miss, but I got one out of there so far. And two, so we ended up getting two, which is good. So one, two, we're on our way. 
perfect. Going into our third set, we have four sets. We might be able to hit this bonus too. Oh my gosh, my, my casting today is incredible. All right, what do I keep here? Let's go with this one. No, okay, so we got one. That's gonna be enough though to, succe to succeed at this. There we go. So that's gonna be one, that's our third. Going into our last set, can we get the bonus? Sure hoping, there we go. That is it right there. And let's roll some extra dice here. Keep going for those black ones, no. So we got one and a blank, but that's enough, just enough to hit that. So we're gonna go ahead and gain ourselves a feat of marksmanship, which is good. The tin, the lure pops down into the water near the cattails. You feel a tug and the line pulls. You have it, reel it in, she says excitedly. It doesn't feel like anything alive, more like a lost boot or a tree branch. You reel in an old tin, well that's unfortunate. Give it here, the woman snatches it and pries it open. She dumps a handful of gold coins on the ground and begs and begins to count them. Uh, yes, it's all there. She pulls off the fishing lure. This is yours for one gold. You'll want it. If you pay one gold, place the magnetic lure in your inventory. Ugh, I don't have any gold because I burnt it all on the hook. That's unfortunate. Now it does say here I can try to catch an actual fish or I can stop here. And I think I'm gonna try to catch an actual fish. You head down to the tackle shop to buy bait. You'll need it to fish. Talag keeps a spare fishing rod for you behind the counter. Now we got different things going on here. So for the red cubes are the horsefly, we have the whistle cricket, and we have the stink worm. And some of them are free, some cost one gold, some cost two gold. So in this case, we have one in stock of each and I have no gold. So it looks like I'm taking the horsefly, which is not sounding all that exciting. And then it says, buy your bait up to three. You can get three if you wish. Of course, you could buy across all of them if you had uh, two, well, I guess it'd be three gold in order to pull all three of those from stock. And then it says, take a cube of the associated color, red, black, or gold. If you're broke, of course, the horse flies is what I got. And then place a fishing rod in your inventory. And then you're going to start going fishing at 64. So we're going to put this in our inventory because we got a new rod. Fishing lessons. It says to pull three fishing cards at 91. You're going to shuffle them and place them face down just like that. It says to place one or more bait cubes on the fishing spots, cards that you would like to cast on. All bait purchased must be used. Roll as you would during an encounter and attempt to meet the conditions indicated on the fishing spot cards. If those conditions are met, you've got a bite. Turn over the card. If the bait you used is listed, you have successfully caught a fish. Only one player may roll per fishing spot. All right, I'm placing my bait on this one right here, and we've got one set with an accuracy four. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can get these three in order to somehow build out a bullseye. If we can pull it off, that would be awesome. Let's see what we got. That is not the greatest result ever. I could stick with one of these. Yikes, it's gonna be a slow build, I think, to get this. Oh, uh, that's, that's perfect. I think that's enough right there. Yeah, like that is easily enough. We can stop right there. I'm able to get the one that I need. Let's go ahead and flip this over and see what we get. Hey, we got a sunfish, that's awesome. Uh, so this one says, and it looks like the cube matches what I got. So this is an automatic catch. So it says, bravo, a sunfish will bring you luck. It says all players can now use the gray wild shot dice. No way, I just got an extra wild shot dice. Now I'm rolling these two. Now I technically didn't even uh, roll the black one in the last roll, but it didn't make any effect anyway. But now I have a gray one too. It says, remember during a face off, only one wild shot dice may be rolled between two players. So what's worth clarifying about this is that even though I have two wild shot dice in my pool, I'm only ever gonna be able to use one, but I get to choose between them because I've essentially unlocked this one. And there's obviously gonna be differences across the die. This one has two bullseyes, lots of blanks and an X, whereas this one here has likely two bullseyes, yep but it also has a new symbol on top of the X that's here. And that symbol is called Ricochet, which allows you to reroll a shot dice of your choice. So this die compared to this one is much better. We've left the Great Oaks and it states here, the road ahead forks into two. An old sign marks Hickory Hills to the right and Pointy Peaks to the left. Both will eventually lead to Crow Falls and from there to the coast, but you're not sure which to take. A crow lands on the right side of the sign. Maybe the crow knows the way, but then another lands on the left and then another. They start to caw at you and ruffle their feathers furiously. These birds look angry. One of them leaps into the air in your direction. 
So what you've seen up to this point has been me safely taking shots at other things, whereas in this case, we have the crows actually coming down on us, and we have to deal with the fact the crows are going to actually fight back. Now, what changes in what's called face-offs, when you have an opponent that's actually attacking back at you, you don't have set limits anymore like normal. You'll see on the card here, we still have the accuracy in terms of how many shot dice that we're rolling, but we basically now have a meter along my card, and of course, this is going to denote uh, the areas that the enemies, the crows in this case, are going to be trying to fill up in order to complete all of this from left to right to take us out. Whereas on the right-hand side, the crows, we need to land seven bullseyes. And if we get that, we're going to get a feat of marksmanship as a reward here at the top. Of course, it also tells us the valid rolls that we can be used in order to build a bullseye. And something else I need to mention, which I might not have made perfectly clear earlier on when I was making rolls with the shot dice is if you happen to land in this case you can see you have a black half of a bullseye and a white half you can actually combine those two together to make a bullseye that is a legal bullseye so just keep that in mind so we begin our face off with Hildegard here, actually four. So four shot dice going in. We're looking for any of these symbols over here in order to make a bullseye happen. So we don't want to see any circles and we don't want to see any blanks. Those are the ones that are not going to help us. Oh my gosh. Uh, so we got two of these. We definitely need to reroll those. This is worth keeping kind of. Uh, we can actually use these to build. If we get another half circle, that could be possible. But to be completely honest, this is not the greatest roll in the world. I'll keep these two for now. We're going to reroll these, hoping another half circle. Come on. Oh, not good. Okay, let's go ahead and do this to kind of hopefully save us. I hope this last one here can give us a connection on one of these to turn one into a bullseye. And oh my gosh, we do not. Okay, so that was a terrible roll all the way around. We're going to go ahead and roll our wild die, which is a gray die. First time I'm using this after gaining it. Nice. The only way we're getting a bullseye is that. So we got ourselves one. We're ticking ourselves up. We need six more. So because these enemies are hitting back, we go to the crows here, which have an accuracy of three. Three shot dice are rolled, and you'll notice here that from left to right, they're trying to fill in this row in order to have you lose this face-off. And when they roll these dice, they're going to look across, based on the number of dice they're rolling, for any potential to match one of those symbols. And you'll see what I mean by that. They're going to lock in dice even if there's only a potential that they're going to be able to fill it in. So we'll talk about that as it happens. It'll make a lot more sense. So... Here we go. We got ourselves a pip, a circle, and a blank. So if we take a look at the first three positions here, the first two cannot be satisfied by these dice, but the third one can be satisfied by this one. So they're going to lock this one in, hoping that they're going to be able to get the other two. If they don't get the other two, they don't get the circle to count. So it's kind of a nice, interesting mechanic there. All right, so this is really good so far because now they're kind of in a little bit of trouble here. So there's nothing here that's going to help them. And if they go, of course, roll, the only thing they can really go at this point in time is hoping to get the first position and they don't get it. So it's a complete miss across all three dice. All right, it's our time to see if we can get some more hits on these crows. Oh my gosh, what a terrible roll that is. All three of these are useless. This one has potential. <laughs> That's about it. So we're going to go ahead and roll these off again. Oh, another bad one. This is good. Uh, this could be good if we get the other half of it. So let's just roll this one. No, that's a complete wash. Now we're going to take our great eye here and roll it. We got ourselves a bullseye. So at least we have one. We're slowly taking them down. Let's move on to the crows now. Now, again, I do still have my feats of marksmanship. But I'm going to wait to use those. I don't want to just burn them when I'm not really in trouble yet because my row has not been filling up. So the crows are coming back at us with three dice. Again, trying to focus on any of these first three positions, primarily the very first one. There we go. So they're locking in the first one for sure, and they're going to keep working on the other ones. This one they're going to keep because it has a potential to happen, and they're going to roll this one. So that's kind of where things get crazy. So you want to think you're rolling three dice, you take a look at the position at the far left they haven't filled in yet, and you start locking dice in based on how many dice they're rolling, and they're going to re-roll anything else that doesn't match because they're trying to connect left to right those three. They want to roll a black half bullseye. If they do, they get one, two, three hits across. If they don't get the black bullseye on this roll, they only get the first position because they can't go ahead and jump over to fill the third position, if that makes sense. So here we go. Are they going to get the black one? They don't. So they're not going to get these, which means they just get the one. So we're going to go ahead with a black marker and fill it in. And this is great because this is going to give us the opportunity to block 
Now blocking is really straightforward. Basically we're going to go into our typical attack, but this time we have the opportunity to put a block cube out. And I'll show you how this works. It's very simple. Basically, so long as all cubes to the left of an orange space are filled in, then you are able, if you land that icon in the orange space, you can choose to put a block cube up top and what that's going to do is when the enemy's turn comes around and they roll the dice if they happen to get a half black bullseye your block cube is going to prevent that from actually hitting you so the cube the block cube will just be removed and it just continues on from there so it's going to slow down the progress of the crows from hurting you but the key is you cannot fill that block cube if you haven't already or, you know essentially been hit by the enemies up to that orange position so you'll see how that works later on potentially uh, based on the crows they can potentially get quite a bit of damage all at the same time across their dice if they get really lucky sometimes they get three which is brutal because it can rip right across your whole row and stop you from being able to block at all so you really want to hope that doesn't happen um, so in this case we got the one let's go ahead and roll our four dice we're going to see what we can do and blocking is completely optional, so you do not have to do it. So there'll be moments where you're going to be uh, gritting your teeth, wondering whether it's a good idea or not. Here we go. All right, that's better. So we got two right off the bat that are going to create a bullseye, so that's great. I'm going to probably re-roll these two. I don't have any black half bullseyes to use for blocking yet. Yikes, that's not good. Let's go ahead and just lock th yeah, this isn't really going to be helpful. I don't think we're going to be getting much of this. So, oh, sorry, that's not what I rolled there. I rolled this, and then I flung it over sideways. So this is what I got. It's only going to be one bullseye, unfortunately. Let's roll the gray dice, see what we get. And a blank. Wow. Okay, so we're slowly taking them down to death. we got to work on this a little bit faster, or this could come back to haunt us. So... At this point, we take this out of the equation, take one of these out of the equation. The crows are ro rolling against us, and they're looking now for the black half bullseye to... Oh, good. That's excellent. So now we take a look across the row here. They could potentially get the circle, and they could potentially get the pip as well. The question of the day is whether or not they're going to be able to re-roll this to land the black half bullseye. If they do, this is bad news for me. Oh, thank goodness. So because they got this result, they don't get to place in anything else. So the whole thing's a wash because they have to fill from left to right. Good thing. Okay, so now we're going for us. Let's roll our four dice. We do have the opportunity to block. Again, if we can get a half black bullseye ourselves. Nice, we got one finally. Okay, so this is great. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this die in in order to put a cube to block because I feel like pain is coming our way. And again, when you're doing this, you have to make sure it's only a valid block if all cube positions prior to the orange one that you're blocking are filled in. If this was empty, I would not be able to place a black cube here. So you always have to keep that in mind. Of course, if the crows happen to get a really good combination of like three, they could hop right past all everything before you even have a chance to even block. So you probably want to in most cases, but remember it's sucking up dice away from building bullseyes. So it's kind of a strategic choice. I'm going to hold on to this one as well, because I think that's actually a pretty good die to have, seeing as those are like the quickest ones to a bullseye. And we got another one. Sweet. So this is going to be one bullseye between the two of these. This one will be rolled and half. There we go. That's it. We're going to roll our gray die. Got a blank, but at least we got one bullseye here. So that's good. And we were able to block and we're kind of doing really well so far, ticking these guys down. All right. So the gray die is out of the equation that this die will come out. We'll roll three dice for the crows coming at us. This time we have a block in place. So if they get their first black half bullseye, it's not going to hurt us. So we got ourselves, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, I shouldn't say we, the crows got this. This is great for us. So we got a white one here. So a potential in the future. Uh, this will be re-rolled. This will be re-rolled because it doesn't match. So we're going to keep rolling, finessing the shot. Wow, they are not getting what they want. So this one is going to be uh, locked in, and we're going to be re-rolling this one. And that is a complete wash. That is awesome. All right, so those are off the table. We're going to grab our four dice, and we're going to roll. We might have this in the bag if we can start building some bullseyes fast enough. That I'm holding on to for sure. Uh, I can't use any of that, so I'm just going to re-roll all of it. Ugh, it's an even more terrible roll. I'll keep the... Uh, terrible i'll keep this let's go to the next one okay that's a little better so we got the one right there not bad um at this point we'll roll our gray die nice so we got two we are up to six we're doing okay so now we're gonna go ahead and roll this and i haven't even had to use the feats of marksmanship at all which is great they cannot land a black sign this is awesome the black bullseye is just so hard for them to get uh, they could potentially get the circle so that will stay there we're going to re-roll these two 
and they still are just not able to pull it off. So we're gonna roll another one and they still can't do it. They just cannot get past that first part and I am loving it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and roll this. Let's see if we get our last bullseye. There is one. I'll reroll all of these looking for that other half. There we go. There's the half and we'll roll our gray die. That's two, that's enough. Those crows are out of the equation. Now remember, feats of marksmanship can really come in handy. I didn't have to use them here, but there are situations where the crows, like I said, could get a crazy combination and really start throwing the damage on you. And you might need to speed things up with your dice rolling to get better results by using these. Thankfully, I didn't have to burn any. And so when I gained one by hitting the bullseye limit here on the card, I get a feat of marksmanship one. And that's gonna allow me to put another cube up here for three. That's gonna tick me up to a higher positive status effect level than I had before four, which is up to three. There's a one and there's a two and there's a three. Of course, you can keep on gaining beyond that. The third one's called a redo. It says retry a target or face off. That sounds awesome because if we get into a situation where we have a target to go up against, which you've seen in the past, or face off like the crows and we don't do well, we can just use all of our feats of marksmanship to retry it. That can be a saving grace that you want to keep. Plucked Luck. It says, free of the birds at last. You start plucking the pointy black feathers out of your hair and clothes. For a brief moment, you're able to sit in peace before you hear it. Something or someone is rustling behind you. Do you have the conversation card number 13 spoke to? Oh, I don't think I have that. So because I don't have that, I gotta go to the nope, I don't, which is 74. Hurling Husks. Rather suddenly, you're hit in the back by something hard and blunt. The blow knocks you over. You turn to see a scarecrow not 10 feet away hurling corn husks at you. This must be an enchantment to ward off those rabid crows. With all the feathers lying about, this one must be a little confused. Pull cards 96 and 97. On top of those cards being pulled, we also had to pull an attack card down below here, 75, 76, which gave us this and this. So we are going up against the Scarecrow and we have a card here that needs to be set up and these three cards need to be set up in a certain fashion. One of the cards we pulled is called Corn of Chaos Rules. It literally tells us exactly how to lay out the cards on the table and the rules around what's about to happen. The Corn of Chaos rule says, look out, the Scarecrow is throwing corn missiles. Layout cards 75, 97, 76 is pictured below, which I've done. At the end of each of Hildegard's sets, turn 97 counterclockwise, it starts with wild, and count each complete circulation of card 97 with a cube. For each circulation, add plus one to hit. The status effect listed will affect Hildegard's set during your turn. You may opt to use any bullseye combination on the Corn of Chaos. It can be removed after three bullseyes. The face-off ends when Hildegard or the Scarecrow is defeated. Now, one thing I will mention is that there is an FAQ for this game, and I highly recommend you go check that out because at times there are certain cards which might denote an illustration that actually is incorrect. Taking a look at this husk, you'll instantly wonder why the Scarecrow is chucking husks this way, but yet the card is starting pointing this way based on the illustration up here, when in actuality from the FAQ, it is supposed to have the wild on top as it even denotes on the card in its writing or wording, but the illustration is off. So this is the correct setup. So this face-off has a little bit more going on for it. On top of the fact we're trying to get the seven to take the scarecrow out, we can also put three bullseyes on this corn husk in the middle in order to get rid of it completely. But as time ticks on, every single time down one of my turns, this thing's gonna rotate. And once it does a full rotation, a plus one hit is being added to me. So if I just kind of let this thing exist, I'm kind of getting an extra hit every so often. I can also just kind of forcibly get rid of it if I can get three bullseyes fast enough. But again, that's gonna, pull me away from actually putting those bullseyes on the scarecrow. So a nice fun balance to try to figure out what's better. Plus the fact the effects on this card, depending on what position they're in, once the actual thing rotates counterclockwise, an effect will be at the very top and that is going to also impact me for the given set. So that's something else to think about and another probably good reason to get rid of this thing as fast as possible. So starting things off, we're on the wild side. So nothing to start with in terms of effects. Uh, but if I take a quick look here, actually, I shouldn't say that. Uh, the wild side is a positive effect and that it says may reroll a wild shot on the set. So inside of this one, I've got good things coming to me. It's on its way to me. I'm gonna be able to reroll this when I do it. But for now, going up against this thing, we got four red dice. So let's go ahead and see what we can get here. Now we can't use the black half bullseyes this time around. So it's only the white ones and uh, 
all those little bits and pieces. So we got a good roll right there. So I'll definitely take this. I'm gonna re-roll all the rest of this for now. Let's see, what we got. there we go. So there's one right there, so that's good. Let's see what else we can get. Can't use black, can't use the pip I can use. Actually, I could use a pip and I can get a circle if I land it. Oh, I saw it for half a second and it went away. Uh, again, I could use a feat of marksmanship in order to try to risk that, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna roll this, and again, because I have a wild at the top, I'm gonna be able to re-roll it if I wish. Oop, definitely gonna do that. Oh, man, so I have to disregard one of my rolls, uh, or one of my dice, I should say, from the equation. I'll just disregard this one. It still doesn't stop me from getting a bullseye. I'm going to actually uh, inflict this thing with a hit. So I'm gonna put this uh, in the middle, and once we get three bullseyes in this thing, we can get rid of it uh, to stop all the negative conditions that are going to happen. My turn just ended, and it's going to flip counterclockwise. All right, the Scarecrow's got three red dice coming at me. Let's see what happens here. Looking for a circle. Oh, got it right off the bat. That is not good. And can it get anything else with the rest of the dice? No, so it'll continue to finesse them. That's not going to help it. We'll lock in one roll another. Can it get a pip? It does, oh, nasty. So it's able to actually lock up those first two positions, which is terrible because that stops me from being able to block in that position, so that's not good. Don't like it. Going into this next set here, we have the Tame ability affecting us. Tame states, no wild shot dice on the next set. So I'm gonna take this wild shot dice, put it up here to remind myself I'm not rolling it. And we're gonna go ahead and just roll these and bank on them, hopefully being decent. Ah, that's not good. This could be good. So I'll hold on to the circle and I'll get rid of the rest. We're gonna keep on rolling here, come on. Oh, not good. Okay, that's good. That's a bullseye right there. I'll keep the white maybe, and we'll reroll and hopefully get another white. Come on, white half. Oh, black one, not good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. We got one there. We can't roll this, but we get one bullseye. So we're gonna hit this husk again a second time. All right, the scarecrow is coming back at us with an accuracy of three. So we're rolling this, seeing what happens. Hopefully it's not gonna be a black half bullseye. Nice. It is not. Okay, and none of these actually are potentials across the three, so uh, we have to lock in at least one. We'll finesse, uh, blocking and breaking everything in sight here. Didn't get anything, locking in another, rolling again. That's what I like to see. Absolutely nothing from the Scarecrow. Now this time around, things change for Hildegard. Uh, so I have a flub here, and flub says that minus one shot die on your next set. So unfortunately, I'm only rolling three, but I do get to roll my gray die at the end, so that's good. Let's roll these and see how we do. Oh, nice, right of the gates we got one, that's awesome. Uh, I'll probably just re-roll this, but it's not gonna really affect much. So we got one guaranteed right there, and we're gonna roll this die. Okay, we're allowed to re-roll, but you know what? That's not really gonna help us because uh, we don't really, well, it would have helped us if we had four dice, but we don't thanks to the flub. Uh, so this still gives us one, which is great because guess what? We just did three bullseyes to this husk. This thing's out of here. All right, it's just me and the Scarecrow. No more husks coming my way. So let's go ahead and roll for the Scarecrow. Let's see, it's looking for black half bullseyes. It does not get any, but it does get one of the arcs on the third position, which it would love to use if it can get these black half bullseyes. Oh no, it got one. That's not good. That's not good at all. So that means it's now got the first position. It could potentially get the third if it can roll another half black bullseye. Oh, thank goodness. So only one is gonna be ticked up on this track. We're still in it. That would have been a brutal combination. So good news is we are up to an orange one, which means we could get a black half die. And even though we can't use it to get a bullseye on this individual, we could use it to block. So now we have an actual use for them. Plus we have our four dice back because we don't have to deal with the hus flying around and causing us grief. Okay, because all those nasty abilities on this card, honestly, were not fun to deal with. Uh, so let's keep this one here. I like this one. I actually kind of like, oh shoot. I kind of like that one too, to be honest. The one I just fired across the table. So I might keep these two and we'll roll these two, see what we get. Yes, that's awesome. Okay, actually that works out really well. So we got a bullseye here. This I'm gonna I'm gonna actually cash in in order to put a block cube on so we can kind of slow the uh, the pain coming our way from the scarecrow. And the other one is pretty much dead in the water anyway. So that's good. We still have our gray die to roll. We get a re-roll, that's not really gonna help us in this situation, so, oops, I just knocked that over. So we get one bullseye hit, and it actually gets to go against the Scarecrow for the first time, so that's good. Uh, Scarecrow is gonna attack back, and uh, we have a block now, finally. 
All right, so that is going to be one there. Oh no, this is really bad. So it's got potential to get to those other ones, maybe. This is where it gets a little bit interesting because technically it doesn't have potential to get to the last pip. And why is that? Because right now it needs two black uh, half bullseyes just to clear that first space. And then the best it could do with three dice is get to the second position with this one. So we can reroll these two for the enemy. The enemy's not dumb. It's going to, you know, look at the odds of what it's doing and try to get the best out of it. That's a great roll. Uh, we have to lock in something. So we'll lock in one, reroll another, and nothing gets through because they could not land the half black bullseye. Awesome. So it comes back to us. We've got an opportunity. Let's see if we can make use of it. Oh, that's a, not a way to make use of it. This actually, these are good. These two are good. These are terrible. Let's hope for pips. Come on. Oh, worst. Okay, so in that case, I guess I got to hold on to one of these. Come on, give me. Oh my gosh, what a bunch of nothing. Okay, let's roll the great eye here. Jeez. Okay, well, I guess there's potential here with this. Come on. Oh my goodness, I could not make anything happen into that roll. That was brutal. Uh, wow, a whole bunch of nothing on that one. You don't want many turns like that. That's just time wasted. Uh-oh, here we go. This is where this is where pain starts coming our way. So basically locking this one in, uh, there's potential to get to the second position, but it still needs to get to the one after it. It doesn't. So what does actually matter here is this will knock off the defense here. So going into the next turn, it's going to be able to actually, when we get another half black bullseye, it'll be able to fill in that position, but nothing else counts. So that's good news for us. We come back with another attack here. Now we can also repopulate that block again, and I, I might do it. Uh, so that's good. One bullseye off the hop. I love when that happens. Uh, uh, let's hold on to this, I guess. Come on. Oh, worst. I should have done it the other way around. Okay, let's roll our gray die. Nothing. Okay, so we got one bullseye. We might as well just tick it up to two. We are slowly pecking away at the scarecrow, but I'm getting a little bit concerned now that we don't have a block there. Here we go. What is happening? Okay, so no black yet, but potential to get, oops, I keep knocking those dice over. Potential to get one, so we'll go like that. I have to reroll the other two. Oh, I saw the black for a half second there. Uh, we have to lock one of them in, and it still needs that half black bullseye. It doesn't get it, so nothing happens. We're safe for another round. Okay, let's continue to plug away at this individual. Great one to keep there. Uh, that's a, that's a potential block. So we're going to go ahead and lock that one in. Going to block that up, gum them up even further. Uh, that's good. That's going to be a bullseye. And then of course this won't really matter too, too much. We're going to roll our gray die. Nice. So we have two bullseyes coming out of that. This was a wash. This helped with our block. So we're up to four now and we got some defense. Awesome. All right, Scarecrow is coming back at us. Not too happy. This is not good for Scarecrow. It could potentially get to that uh, position there if it can get some more. Oh, it really is struggling to find the black. It cannot, and I love it. This is awesome. <laughs> it's giving me a window, and I'm going to take advantage of it. Uh, so we're going to take this. I might even take that one too. I uh, can't use this right now, so that'll be rerolled. This is good for a bullseye. Come on, give me a half white. Ah. All right, so we got one. And that's it, just one. I'm not, I'm like literally refusing to use my feats of marksmanship and I could be doing that in order to try to make this better, but we're doing okay right now, so I'm not gonna bother. Our, oh, there we go, that's a roll. So there's two, that is gonna be locked in because it can take away a defense and then finally fill in that position to stop me from trying to block it. It's gonna roll this and if it gets the hook, the kind of the half bullseye, Oh, thank goodness it didn't get that. Okay, so it is going to go ahead and blow away our defense. Essentially uses that same cube to just lock that area up. And we're getting close to the end, guys. This is not good. This is going to come down to the wire. We currently have five bullseyes on this thing. We need to get some others. Come on. There we go. Continuing on. Yeah. Oh, tough call. Ugh. Let's go the half white one. No. Okay. Keep knocking these out. Let's see if we can get our bullseye from here. No, we still couldn't even get it from there either. Oh, we gave him an opportunity. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no. Now here's the thing. 
I could use a feat of marksmanship knowing that I'll get one back. It might be a good idea because if he gets lucky and gets that combination of three, we lose. And that could actually happen. So I'm going to be smart here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to re-roll a wild die. And so I'm going to re... Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to re-roll a wild shot dice on set, which is going to be a one cost. So one of my feet of marksmanship is going to be paid. I'm re-rolling this one. Come on, bullseye. Oh, no. And I can only use that ability once. Now, there's another one there where I could add a shot die to the next set for one. That's not going to help me right now. Uh, for two, though, I can add a bullseye on a target or face off, or I can add an additional set on a target. But I'd have to spend both. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to hold on and just hope that the Scarecrow doesn't do it because I don't want to I don't want to burn all those feeds of marksmanship. I want to hold on to them. I'm greedy right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll the three dice. Jeez, this is dangerous. I don't feel like this is a good idea, but ugh. OK, got one. Not good. It only counts if it gets the other one on the side. Oh, good. OK, that's good. Good. Good news. I'm not going to die. Oh, even better. So nothing got through. OK. Let's see, we just need one. Come on, there we go, there's our one. I think, oops, we'll just re-roll these. I'm like smashing cubes everywhere here. We'll keep, oops, we'll keep the circle we had. We'll re-roll this for another pip, nope. I think we got it in the bag anyway. Oh yeah, easily, this is enough damage. That Scarecrow is dead. Thanks to taking out the Scarecrow, we gain ourselves five gold, which I'm happily gonna place over here. And we get another feat of marksmanship to kind of replace the one we used during the battle. Pummeled Pumpkin, it says, you watch in satisfaction as the Scarecrow's pumpkin head bursts in an explosion of orange goop and seeds. Its tattered burlap arms drop lifeless to its sides. The fray has left you covered from head to toe in crow feathers and pumpkin innards. And you didn't pack any extra clothes. It's been a rough morning, but it could have been worse. After wiping yourself down, you notice a note nailed to the Scarecrow's post. If you would like to read it, pull card 84. I do decide to read it. It says Vogue's Gift. To whoever is lucky enough to read this, it's unfortunate for me, but fortunate for you that I stumbled into incurable misfortune. During my pursuits here in the hills, I have contracted crow fever. Due to this and my lack of lineage, I leave mo my most precious family heirloom to you. On the path through the pointy peaks, you'll come across the Oak of Elders. I've hung it there. Please be respectful of the others that rest. A warning, keep away from the crows. My enchantments haven't worked. They're poisoned and will give you the fever as they did me. It takes hold of your mind and drives you mad. Sincerely, Vogue. Place Vogue's will in your inventory. So now we have a choice between whether we go to Hickory Hills or Pointy Peaks. And at this point in the play, I'm going to stop right here for chapter number one. And I want to throw it back to you guys. Where do you think I should go next? Hickory Hills or Pointy Peaks? Let me know in the comments below. I'll take the favorite option and we'll run with that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on rolling solo.